I've been covering Godot 4 since it went into alpha, and I'm very excited to say that Godot 4 has gone into beta. There is a link in the description where you can check out the blog post and get a download link for the executable itself, and you can play around with it right now. Let's talk about what that actually means though. Godot is a free and open source game engine with a wonderful growing following, and it's had significant milestones where it's gone into version 2 and 3, and now 4. 4 became publicly available in January of 2022, and now we're in September, we're officially going into beta. During Godot's alpha development phase, the public got to experience all the features of the new engine for the first time and play around with all the tremendous new improvements, like the Vulkan renderer, novel SDFGI, and completely reworked GDScript 2. And throughout those 17 alpha builds, we've had breaking changes from version to version, and new features, and it's been very, very busy. Well, going into beta means one very important thing for me, as someone who maintains a Godot 4 project, and that is feature freeze. No new features other than those discussed and planned in advance are going to make it into the first full release of Godot 4. Instead, the development time is to be aimed squarely at two things, bug fixes and performance. In fact, the last couple of alpha versions have been focusing on this greatly, with an aggressive number of renames every time to get closer to final preferred naming schemes. I'm looking straight at you, Linear 2DB, and anything else with a 2 in its name. You're gone. But the long and short of it is, when you download the Godot 4 beta, it contains everything the final releases will have, and all future focus is going to be primarily on stability. Godot 4 has an overwhelming number of new features and improvements, which I've been making demos for and documenting in my course Godot for Beginners, which is what you'll be seeing be real of in the background, but more on that later on. Let's talk a little bit about what Godot 4 adds, because in the last nine months, so much has been piled on top of what was already a very feature-rich alpha. And also, many of which has been backported to Godot 3 for people to try out in their own ways, which is very nice, especially with stuff like the delightful new tweening systems. Internally, Godot 4 uses Vulkan as a renderer, replacing Gles 2 and Gles 3. This sacrifices supporting older hardware, but it's easier to maintain, and lets developers use more modern rendering techniques. It also lets you take advantage of parallelism and other stuff for more performant graphical code. That Vulkan renderer has a separated side for mobile builds. Early on in the Godot 4 Alpha, mobile wasn't supported. That came about some months ago, so you can do mobile stuff with this side. We also recently got access to HTML builds, but they're in dire need of some of that stability focus going forwards. Another important thing for that performance side of 3D worlds is there is built-in level of detail, so stuff that's further away won't render in as much detail as things that are closer. Very required for open worlds. Global Illumination has had a big overhaul. If you've watched many of my videos, I've gushed about SDFGI at some length as a solution for global illumination in large worlds, and also Voxel GI has been added as a solution for illumination in smaller 3D worlds. In the same vein, we also get screen space indirect lighting to get more colour from that global illumination flowing over and looking just nice. We've had huge improvements in the world of shaders, with greatly improved visual shaders. They're very serviceable now, highly endorse giving them a try. There have been major improvements to the shading language with new constants, functions, structs, and all. You also get global shader parameters now, so you can share data between all of the materials in your world without sending them directly to those materials. It's lovely. We even get new shader types like fog and sky. They're completely new, and the fog ties into volumetric fog, which is a part of world environments, lets you chuck fog into your worlds. One thing I've been really excited about for a long time is compute shaders, and Vulcan's given us access to compute shaders. These are shaders specifically for sending requests to your GPU and getting that information back in a script. Say you've got a large simulation and you want to find out where lots of different things should go, you can send the things you want to calculate over to your compute shader and get results back out much, much faster than your CPU would be able to process. This isn't trivial, you've got to send the data in binary, you've got to write your compute shader in GLSL, but I've just about got a demo project that should be going into my course sometime soon, but we have access to that now. One thing it doesn't let you do is indirect rendering. Uh, when that's added, you'll be able to use it to do stuff like populate a map with grass and other things that involve drawing meshes. 
particles. We've had some fantastic improvements, including particle physics, uh, including three separate objects to generate collision shapes for those in different circumstances. So we have ones that use height maps that are less accurate, but better for open worlds for doing stuff like rain. We've got boxes for precise shapes, but it's arduous to set up, but if you want to get something exactly right, that's the way to do it. And then we have a happy middle ground, which is where you bake actual shapes. We also get access to turbulence, which really lets you achieve some stunning visual results and makes the particles get a bit of their own individual motion with noise. The all new decal node means there's finally a good solution for bullet holes, sprays, and the like. That's a fantastic solution because the old ways of trying to make a bullet hole work, especially if it was on the corner of two different meshes, as that's hairy to say the least. Godot 4 has made some serious changes on focusing on its custom physics engine, Godot Physics. This replaces the previously used bullet physics and gives Godot a lot of power to fix issues and implement new physics features. This was not a trivial process, as Godot Physics needed to be brought up to have the same coverage as Bullet, but as part of that we got some great new things, like new physics shapes, height maps, and reworked soft bodies. Navigation as a whole has had a big overhaul with a dedicated server which greatly improves the performance. That was a very needed change. A bunch of my favourite changes are all in the scripting side. Godot's bespoke scripting language GDScript is a real delight to work with, it combines a bunch of the nice convenience of Python-like languages, along with uh, calling these dedicated C++ functions that means it's really performant when you're using all that built-in stuff. Well, with Godot 4, GDScript was reworked to fix a bunch of problems and add a lot of features. For example, we get Lambda functions, so you can define a function and you can use it like a variable and pass it around. This completely changed how signals worked as well, because signals are functions that get passed around, making connections much easier. You get annotations that replace a bunch of keywords, like on ready and export. They have an at symbol at the start. This also means it's easy to look up what all the keywords are, because you can hit at and then you can do code completion to see what all the available options are. We get properties, these are for defining setters and getters, and that also uses the anonymous functions for the set and get, it's convenient and nice, there's built-in documentation generation, uh, and it all came as part of rewriting how the parser works, which made things more stable, and we got a new tokenizer and parser, and type checking was improved. In fact, type checking was hugely changed because Godot can actually use the type of the variables you're using and actively improve the performance of the code because it dedicates the right amount of space for things when it knows what types they are. So that's really cool. Highly recommend using proper typing when you're in Godot 4 when it wasn't necessarily uh, improving your code when it was Godot 3. That's beyond making it easier to read. GD Native has been replaced by GD Extension, which makes it easier to create plugins for the engine itself. I really want to explore that some more because it's supposed to let you create C++ style plugins for the engine without needing to recompile everything from source. But one sad side of the same coin is Godot's visual scripting is no longer supported. That's a real pity because visual scripting is really nice for people who don't want to write code, but it seems like the support development side just wasn't there for it. So, tragic. Uh, let's talk quickly about 3D specific stuff. There's a new importer for 3D assets specifically, where you can look at materials and you can import a shape as a whole physics body, which is really nice. There's been a lot of focus on making sure everything's named correctly. 3D nodes end with the 3D suffix and 2D nodes end with the 2D suffix. Now there's a lot more congruency there and things share that naming convention. 2D has also had its completely reworked tile set and tile maps. Animation editors had huge improvements with Bezier curves. The editor itself looks completely different. Even in just the last couple of weeks, there have been tweets saying it'd be really nice if there was uh, if there was um, a backdrop to the color at the top of bars and in that area around the play and pause buttons. One thing of note, there is a command line tool to port projects from Godot 3 over to Godot 4. My focus on that course now is entirely on getting it to work in the first beta version and finishing off some of my recent work, which is that compute shader stuff I was talking about and a written document about what the Vulkan renderer is and what it means that Godot is now using that. So here's what's included in the course right now. There is a publicly available demo. This lets you run around and see the stuff I've been able to do in Godot 4. I've tried to create individual scenes that specifically cover 
a, a specific new feature that Godot 4 has added. So there is one that focuses entirely on decals and placing and orienting those on meshes. There is another entirely about volumetric fog that focuses entirely on having different zones that change the volumetric fog properties using temporal reproduction. There is another one entirely about particle physics, which shows off that height mapper, that sign distance field stuff, and that specifically using box shapes for the particles to collide with. There's another one where I set up the navigation server as it currently is and let you do a small game where you had to beat some enemies that will chase you around. Another focusing the new tween overhaul. That's really important because the way tweens work is just so important for easily creating animations. And finally, one all about the shader improvements where I created some snow meshes that you can interact with using global shader parameters and stuff. The last thing that's included for free that you can mess around with is a game created in Godot 4. It's a little thing called Cards of Malady where you get to do a little roguelite card game where you can build a deck and you can fight enemies and there's a bit of uh, random level generation. It's cool. I'm, I'm, I was really happy with that. I'd like to do more actual full game examples so that people can see how a game's put together in the engine. When you pay for the course, you get access to all the source code that made those scenes you can mess around with, so you can see how it's all put together. There's also the written side of the course, which you get access to and is growing as I get more time to spend on actually writing rather than focusing on code and bug fixes and dealing with stuff as the engine changes from version to version. But this includes written guides on getting used to using GD Script 2, how to take advantage of typing and performance, explaining annotations, callables, properties, uh, a little cheat sheet of helpful stuff that I use on a day-to-day -day basis when I'm programming in Godot 4, as well as an explanation of how all the new tweens work and all the new decals work. That's the stuff that's in there at the moment, but there is a roadmap at the start of the introduction which shows the stuff that I'm planning to add. And in fact, the current thing I'm working on writing is an explanation of what uh, Vulkan is and what the transition to Vulkan means for Godot itself, well, for Godot 4 itself. For the first fortnight that Godot 4 is in beta, I am going to have the course on sale so that you can see an example of Godot 4 in action and kickstart your own use of the new engine. Well, thank you very much for watching. I'm so excited for Godot 4 to finally be in beta, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.